Are you an adult living with moderate to severe ulcerative colitis, or UC? Don't let it stop you from doing you. Zaposia can help people with UC achieve and maintain remission. Don't take Zaposia if you had a heart attack, chest pain, stroke or mini stroke, heart failure in the last six months, irregular or abnormal heartbeat not corrected by a pacemaker, if you have untreated severe breathing problems during your sleep, or if you take medicines called MAOIs. Zaposia may cause serious side effects, including infections that can be life-threatening and cause death, slow heart rate, liver or breathing problems, increased blood pressure, macular edema, swelling and narrowing of the brain's blood vessels, and increased risk for PML, a rare brain infection that usually leads to death or severe disability. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions and medications or if you are or plan to become pregnant if you can become pregnant use birth control during treatment and for three months after you stop taking Zaposia. individual results may vary for a prescription only don't let uc stop you from doing you ask your doctor about once daily Zaposia. hey shay how's it going it's going i am self-contained in my home on purpose how are you doing the same <laughs> Hiding out in the house. That's right. I do not have the virus, but I'm hiding from people, so. I don't have that virus either, but um, I don't want to get it, so no. here we are. <laughs> yeah, so what a good day, huh? Good times. Fun times. Fun times. So, tonight, we have a very interesting story for you. Uh, we will be talking about doomsday, murder, and the paranormal all wrapped up in one. Sounds like fun. Oh, yeah. And you guys might need a pen and paper for this one because this is probably going to be the most confusing story we do. And there's a lot of players and a lot of dates and try to keep up. If not, you can always rewind and go back. So good luck because this one's my favorite one so far and I'm excited to talk about it. You ready? Ready. All right. Hit me with the story, Rebecca. So this is uh, an article from the Washington Post dated February 21st of 2020. Um, says, family members used to describe Lori Vallow as an attentive mother who had her kids' best interests at heart. But that was before she reportedly declared herself a god sent to prepare the world for an imminent apocalypse before three untimely deaths of people surrounding her before her children went missing. Seven-year-old Joshua J.J. Vallow and his 17-year-old sister, Tylee Ryan, haven't been seen since September. After fleeing from Idaho to Hawaii during an investigation, Vallow, age 46, was arrested Thursday on charges of felony child of abandonment, a milestone in a case that spans several states and is filled with bizarre twists. If somebody two years ago would have said that this is what's going to happen with Lori, I never would have believed it, J.J.'s grandfather Larry Woodcock said last month when he announced a $20,000 reward for information leading to the children. I don't know what caused this conversion. You don't go from being mother of the year, mother of a special needs child, to being a person who won't even tell you where she is at, where he is at, where they are at. That's a timeline change with Lori, and it started a few years ago, he said. Some of the timeline is detailed in newly released court documents from investigators in the rural Idaho city of Rexburg. Documents paint a bleak picture with police saying, Vallow repeatedly lied about her children's whereabouts, their belongings had been found in an abandoned storage unit, and there has been no sign of them for months. Vallow appeared Friday in court in Hawaii where her attorney couldn't get her $5 million bail lowered. Defense attorney Daniel Hempe said police knew she was on Kauai and had a lawyer who's offered to turn her in. Instead, she was arrested and media was calling us all day, Hempe said. It seems like it was made for media event at a taxpayer expense. She faces a hearing March 2nd on extradition to Idaho. Avalos' children highly disappeared first, according to probable cause affidavit written by Rexburg Police Lieutenant Ron Ball. The teen went on a day trip to nearby Yellowstone National Park with her mom, little brother, and uncle. A National Park Service camera captured her image at the entrance, and a photo from Vallow's computer shows the girl made it inside the park. But ever since, no trace, Ball wrote. Then, J.J. vanished, the document says. He was enrolled in an elementary school for a few weeks in September and last seen there shortly before Vallow told employees she was going to homeschool the boy. 
We have not been able to find any witnesses who have seen JJ since September 24th of 2019, Ball wrote. Investigations into strange circumstances surrounding Ballow didn't begin in September. Her husband, Charles Ballow, was shot and killed in January at the family suburban Phoenix home by her brother, Alex Cox. The Ballow's marriage had been crumbling. Charles had filed for a divorce, saying in court documents that he feared she would kill him and that she developed strange doomsday cult-like beliefs, reportedly calling herself a god assigned to carry out the work of the 144,000 at Christ's second coming in July of 2020. Cox told police the shooting was in self-defense, that Charles Vallo had come at him with a baseball bat. Police investigated, but the case didn't go far before Cox died of unknown causes in his Arizona home in December. Toxicology reports done as part of an autopsy have not yet been released. Lori Vallow moved to Idaho with the kids. She got an apartment in Rexburg in early September and reportedly continued spending time with an old acquaintance, Chad Daybell. He's a publisher and author who has written several books loosely based on the theology of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, largely focused on doomsday scenarios. He also posted podcasts for an online organization aimed at church members with an interest in preparing for biblical end times. Lori Vallow participated in some of the podcasts, and the truth had grown close. Daybell's longtime wife, Tammy Daybell, died in October. The obituary said the 49-year-old Fitt School librarian died of natural causes, and the family declined an autopsy before she was buried in Utah. About two weeks later, Chad Daybell and Vallow married on a Hawaii beach. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, J.J.'s grandparents, Larry and Kay Woodcock of Louisiana, were increasingly worried about the kids. Regular phone calls with J.J. grew frequent and then stopped in August, and they couldn't get answers. Idaho authorities were growing suspicious after hearing that Daybell had married so soon after his wife's unexpected death. They exhumed Tammy Daybell's body. The results of toxicology and other testing have not yet been released. In late November, police and Rexford showed up at Vallow's apartment to check on the children at the grandparents' request. Investigators spoke with Cox and Daybell and got strange reaction documents, say. Chad acted as if he didn't know Lori very well and stated he didn't know her phone number. Alex told detectives that J.J. with his, with his grandmother, Kay Woodcock, in Louisiana, which was not likely to be true due to the fact that Kay was the individual who f- first called in the missing child report, Bob wrote. Lieutenant said Ballow told him the boy was in Arizona with a friend. That friend told police that J.J. hadn't been to her house for months. When Rexburg retreats returned, Ballow's home was empty. The investigation has turned up disturbing findings, but no sign of the children. Their belongings, including JJ's winter clothes, were found in an abandoned storage unit in Rexburg last month. Police searching Bellows apartment found medicine prescribed to JJ, who has autism, but it was dated January 2019, and the prescription has never been filled in the Idaho records show. Daybell and Bala were living in Hawaii by then, in the same town where she and her first husband resided years earlier. Police searched the couple's home and car last month and found the children's birth certificates, Tylee's bank card, and JJ's iPad. But say there's no evidence the child ever the children ever arrived in Hawaii. Bella was ordered by a judge to produce the authorities last month, but she didn't comply. Police asked for an arrest warrant this calling the couple of flight risk. Mm-hmm. Lori Bella and Chad Dayville have significant financial resources. I am aware that Chad Dayville received at least four hundred and thirty thousand in life insurance proceeds on the death of his wife Tanley. As such, Lori and Chad have resources sufficient to help them travel and hide from law enforcement and the court. Ball wrote. An email to Dave was not immediately answered. Uh, Boone reported from Boise, Idaho. So, I'm sure people are very that's confused. The, that's the story. It's a confusing story. It is. Um, it's very confusing, and people are probably like, where's the paranormal twist besides the doomsday? Well, it's coming, because I have more information on the article. So, some of it. Yeah? This is very, very weird. It is very, it strikes me the most about this is the, um, the grandfather call, talking about the timeline shift that happened there. Um, that to me is interesting and concerning that she went from being a caring, loving mother who seemed to be completely wrapped up into her kids to doesn't care where they're at at all. Strange. It is strange. At this point, I hope I'm wrong, but the children probably are not alive. I hope I'm wrong. 
Oh, it seems remote that they are. I mean, at this point, even if she just like abandoned her in the woods um, in that park, she would have come walking out at some point. Mm-hmm. The older daughter that went, uh, the daughter that went missing, um, Telly. Is her name Telly? Mm-hmm. She's a, she was about seventeen, so. and she actually witnessed it, some of the altercation that led to the stepfather's death. So they, there's questions on, did she, you know, all of a sudden feel bad and want to change her story? So I'm going to start at the beginning a little bit here. Because, okay. So February 2006 is when Charles and Lori married. Charles had two boys. Lori had two girls. This was Lori's fourth marriage, and I think it was Charles's second at least. Or only second, I'm not really sure. And the reason why I'm starting there is because everybody keeps saying she was so great, she was so awesome, mother. But in 2007, Alex Cox, Lori's brother, tried to kill her third husband. Um, hmm. he, pled, he pled guilty to assault, not to attempted murder, but... Joe later, that's the third husband's name, later mysteriously died of a heart attack. Quotes around... There's a lot of mysterious stuff going on. Quotes around heart attack. It's up for question. Right. So, that was in 2007. 2012, Charles and Lori adopt JJ. This is why Kay and Larry are JJ's grandparents and not the daughters too. Kay, okay. yeah. Kay and Charles are brother and sister, and it's their grandson, and they adopted him. Okay. So, so that's why they're not um, Telly's grandparents. Okay, that makes some more sense because I was wondering why the the call was about JJ and not yeah. Telly. Yep. Yeah. Since so she's been missing longer. So it, hmm. so then things are pretty. Um, easy going. Everything seems normal. In 2018, Lori meets Chad Daybell at a, a type of end of days event for uh, or a prepper event. Um, she ends up joining his group um, and does get involved with the end of days podcast, as you mentioned. So mm-hmm. that's 2018. In February of 2019. Lori left Charles, like you said. Right. And among other things, she claimed Charles had been taken over by a demon. That it was no longer Charles. It was a demon. Interesting. Yes. So now she's involved in this end of days cult. That's my word. That's what I'm using. I think it's a cult. Yeah. She, like you said, claimed she was a god and she was preparing for the second coming of Christ on July 22nd, 2020. And they could only save 144,000 people. So Lori also told Charles that if he got in the way of her mission, she would murder him and the angels would be there to dispose of the body. And that's right in the divorce decree, uh, divorce filings. Wow. Yeah. So then July 2019 is when Charles is killed, as you said, by the brother Alex, who also attempted to kill her last husband who mysteriously died of a heart attack. Charles is shot multiple wow. times in quote unquote self-defense. And that's when within two months they up and move to Idaho to be closer to Chad. The next thing that happens within the same amount of time, Lori's niece, Melanie, who is estranged from her husband, Brandon at the time, who is also involved in this cult. The Melanie, the niece is involved in the cult, not the husband. Brandon calls 911 when he is shot at as he's standing in his driveway by a guy driving a green Jeep with Texas plates. Alex was driving Charles, who is now deceased, his green Jeep with Texas plates. Mm. Yeah. A week later, a week later, Chad's wife, Tammy, is shot at while she's standing in her driveway. Ten days later, she mysteriously is found dead in her home, as you said. Right. 
leaving behind five children. Uh -huh. And here's another paranormal twist. Chad claims that he was brought into the spirit world by two near-death experiencing um, experiences having to do with water. And I'm not sure how, I couldn't understand how he was wording it, but it sounded like he was claiming to be some type of medium and that he could communicate with dead people and spirit. And um, it all started when he worked at a haunted cemetery. Okay, so that's interesting too. Yeah. Huh. So we've got demons. Yeah. We've got demons. We've, <laughs> we've got, got mediums. We've got, yeah, haunted cemeteries. And that brings right. us up to November 26th when the children went missing. Um, I think you covered that pretty good. Yeah, that article. Yeah, that, that covered pretty that well. part pretty good, except for the fact that not only did she get rid of the children's belongings right away, she got rid of his service dog right away. Mm. She tried to sell it, and the That's breeder saw it for sale and took it. And the police returned uh -huh. the next day, as you said, and not only were they gone, but the house was empty. Here's another paranormal twist. Uh, December 2019, as you said, Alex is found dead in his home. It was actually his new, somewhat new wife's home, who is a long-term member of this cult. Um, I think her name is pronounced Zulema. And... She also has supernatural psychic abilities. She can control the elements. She can see the future. So short time after Alex marries her, he's found dead. Hmm. I think it's interesting that we're not seeing any toxicology reports on these people. <laughs> they're not releasing you know? them. Yeah. They're, because they, yeah. Ha they haven't yeah. been charged with anything yet, so they don't want to show their hand. Right. It's crazy. We have a little bit of everything. Just a little bit of everything. And then, you know, with that weird paranormal mix in there, too, you know. So it makes you wonder if they actually get this to the court. Are they going to claim that he was possessed by a demon and that's why they had the killing? Right. Or, yeah. Well, the brother's dead now, so there'll be no charges unless they can prove she had him do it. Which, if he's dead, how can they prove it? True. The daughter who had witnessed it is gone, so they can't prove. They can't prove she had anything to do with it. Right. Right. This gives paranormal the, a bad name. That's all I gotta say, man. Agreed. Um, <laughs> agreed. Agreed. You know, when they're talking about you know having abilities and thinking they're gods, and mm -hmm. you know, it just it makes the whole field seem more sketchy when something like this goes on. Yeah. That's why people kind of look at you sideways sometimes because of instances like this. I mean, and we left a lot out. If anybody's interested, look it up. All you got to look up is uh, Lori Daybell. Is that it? She has so many last names. Yes. Because it was Varlow. Yeah. Was... And there are, there are hundreds and hundreds of articles about this just because this case is so fascinating, and there's so many details and layers to it. I think fascinating to many people. It is. 48 Hours or 2020 or Dateline, one of them recently did an episode on it. So you can also find it there. It was one of those shows. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I think one of the things that um, seems interesting to me is uh, 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 the whole cult that they're involved in. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, sometimes when we do, like, this paranormal stuff and we start getting into um, groups with different people and we all get talking and stuff, but sometimes we all get pretty far out there. I mean, you have to kind of worry about, you know, <laughs> do, do outside people consider our paranormal groups to be cults? They could. Some of them. Some of the more religious ones. I mean, they think paranormal... As the work of demons, so. But then again, and most of these paranormal groups aren't running around killing all their uh, ex-wives and husbands. And, um, <laughs> yeah, that, no. That's where you cross the line. Yeah, you think? I don't think a, a fiction writer could have wrote a story like this. No, no. So uh, I will be <laughs> waiting and anticipating an update on this story for sure. I think there's going to be a lot more updates on this story. We might have to do a part two down the road. Yeah. Yeah, when they actually 
charge them with something, surely that's coming. I yeah, because what they're only charged with uh, child endangerment, um, contempt of or she, contempt of court, non-support, desertion, um, stuff like that. Mm. So definitely more charges somehow down the road will be coming. Too many people died. Yeah, way too many people died. I, I mean, one person did. Don't get me wrong, wrong. One person did is too many. But I meant that sounded horrible. What I just said. I mean, too many people died for more charges not to come. You understood what I meant, but I just want right. to clarify I knew what that. You did. I do yeah. what you said. <laughs> yeah, that and the kids. I mean, the kid, the kids being completely missing at some point. Something has to turn up there. Something. I mean, you would think. Something would turn up there. It's just, it's such a strange case why she doesn't have any story as to where the kids might be at, you know. No. It's just so strange. It is. She, she, that's her right to remain silent, but it was not her right to break the court order. She had 30 days to produce the children or their whereabouts. Right. And she didn't, so she has a right against self-discrimination. But you're talking about two minor children. Right. It just seems so strange to me that she wouldn't at least try and concoct some sort of story to explain where they're at, other than they're with, you know, somebody, you know, that doesn't happen. Yeah. People thought that uh, Tilly was at school. She said she was enrolled right. in college, and that wasn't true, so... Maybe we're wrong. Yeah, Maybe the all, children will appear. All the stories that she came up with are stuff that is, could easily be checked with one quick phone call. Hey, is the kid there? No, he's not. Yeah, okay, they, well, where's the they knew within 24 hours. They were back the next day with a warrant to search the house because they could find out that easy that the children weren't where she said they were. Right, exactly. She doesn't seem to have a care seems, in the world. No, it just seems so strange to me that she wouldn't try and say, oh, I don't know where he's at. He ran away or I thought he was there. Why isn't he there? And I mean, just it just seems so strange that she just just has no no story. She, well, no concept so of strange. reality or doesn't yeah. care or, you know, just... You'll never catch me, kind of attitude. Right. Like she thinks she's on a completely different timeline than the rest of us. You know, like oh, that doesn't that doesn't matter to me anymore. Yeah. She also made comments. That, that, yeah. She made comments to her friend, and I can't remember the friend's name, but the friend was quoted as saying that maybe I uh, quoted saying th that uh, Lori said something about. The children might be better than having to face doomsday. Uh, they might be better off gone. Can't remember if she said gone or dead or something. So there was a lot of weird comments made before they went missing. Huh. Yeah, that that doesn't sound like a positive comment, no. does it? No, and every time you know she made comments about Charles, if he gets in her way, mm. that he she would murder him, that he's dead. You, should, you know how she told his kids to, he had two boys from the previous marriage? She sent a text. Well, actually, right. she had she had a pool party the day he was killed, and the next day she texted one or both of his sons just saying, sorry, your dad's da dead, died yesterday. Or, but he loved you, and I still wow. love you. That just shows no remorse whatsoever. No, no, none. All right, guys, on that sad note, before we get all worked up and go off on a tangent, our time is up for today. If you want to continue the conversation, join us on our Facebook group, Exploring the Unknown with Rebecca and Shay. And remember, if you have a story you think we should do on air, send them to us, and we'll give you a special shout-out during the show. Till next time, thanks. Thanks. Switching and saving with GEICO is easy, so you're free to ponder life's big questions. 
Like, is the word dictionary in the dictionary? If so, it probably says something like dictionary, noun. A dictionary is the word you are reading now and the pages they were printed on. Basically, this thing you are looking at right now that you're holding, reading words from, it's a dictionary. As in, hey, look at me. I'm holding a dictionary in my hands as I read the definition of dictionary. Yeah, it's probably something like that. Switch and save with Geico. It's easier than you think. And now it's Geico's Motorcycle Rules of the Road. Avoid biking in the rain and never touch another person's bike. Hey, guys, look at these bikes. So shiny. Uh, whoops. I'm going to leave a note. Oh, gosh, there's more. And the rule to saving on motorcycle insurance is, in 15 minutes, Geico could save you 15% or more.